You're watching The Wallace Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering dental implants. My first guest is an expert on the topic, seems to be the go-to guy when you want to get dental implants in the Salt Lake area. Uh, here with us, we have Dr. Austin. Dr. Austin, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Now, before we get into uh, today's topic, tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, my practice is located in uh, the Gateway Mall, uh, which is right in downtown Salt Lake That's City. It's a big, beautiful mall. Big, beautiful. It was built for the 2002 Olympics. Okay. And uh, it was a, a hub for a lot of activity back then and still is. And so we decided to move our um, dental implant practice into that area. And it has become a focus point for Utah. Okay, what types of, I mean, what type of patients do you see? We, we've invited you to talk about dental implants, but you do a lot of things, I guess. We do. We do uh, comprehensive dental work. I okay. mean, people that have lots of different types of problems come to us. High socioeconomic status, people that are just have one or two teeth that are missing and need problems, need restoration, small concerns to large concerns. We really uh, do a comprehensive treatment plan on every single patient. Now, now, now you, which is interesting, it's in seventh grade you knew you wanted to be a dentist. Yeah. I, why? Why? Why dentistry? You know, it's a weird thing. Dentist was, in your family, by the way? No dentist in my family. Okay. family. Yeah. My dad was an accountant. I was cleaning out their house, and I found some old brochures <laughs> from seventh grade, and here's all these dental brochures. So it's something that I've wanted to be my whole life. Really? Uh, so yeah. all through high school, you said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna." Be a I, dentist. I had nothing else in my mind. It's just like, what do I need to do to become a dentist? It was just part you of You love it. You of, like it. I really do. It's, okay. it's fabulous. And your son now is going to be a dentist. My son is a dentist. He just oh, graduated he last, uh, last year from Baltimore, University of Maryland, and now he's going to be an oral surgeon. So I, my daughter's a hygienist that works in my office. And wow. So we've got well, good for you. dental in our blood here a little bit. Okay, Georgetown University. T tell me, let's talk a little bit about your background and training. Okay. I graduated with a degree in chemistry and uh, then decided to go to dental school at Georgetown in Washington, D.C. It was a fabulous experience, great training. And then when I got out of school, I realized, you know what, I'm not just going to be the regular dentist that's just going to do what they learned in dental school. I'm okay. going to continue on. I'm going to learn new things. And so from the very get-go, I started my march towards continuing education and you went to LVI. LVI I guess is what Juilliard is to music. Dentists from all over the world go there to learn what? Well they learn how to do cosmetic dentistry basically okay. Okay. and to position people's jaws in the right position in a comfortable bite relationship so that you can function and have great looking teeth and so I graduated from there and then continued on doing residency programs in implants and also continuing education in new techniques in regards to implants. Okay, now we, you know, when we want to do this topic, hot topic, dental implants, we get a lot of emails on this. Yeah. Uh, we want somebody with a lot of experience, a lot of training. Uh, Nobel, tell me about your training with implants. You've, you, you've been doing it quite some time and, and, and you, I guess you, you do the surgery, then you also restore the implant or put the tooth on it. Right. Expand on that. It's a comprehensive treatment. The thing is, when you place implants, you have to place them in such a position so that they can aesthetically be restored. So the same person that places them and positions them can also restore them aesthetically. And that's a key factor. You don't have to be farmed out as a patient to all of okay. these different... So it's uh, all under one roof? All under one roof, including a okay. uh, ceramic uh, arts laboratory. So everything is done as a team effort under All one right. roof. Now you don't look like a dentist. Do people ever say that to you? Yeah, I actually get that a lot. I okay. don't look like a dentist. You have a sm nice smile though. Thanks. By the way. And Thank do you. people tell you that though on a daily basis? I don't like the dentist. Yeah, I hear that every day. Oh really? Yeah, people come in. Sincerely and, they say yeah, I don't the, like the dentist. The thing that they say the most is this. Uh, I'd rather be anywhere than here. In the, I'd rather have a baby than be here at the dentist. <laughs> Does that like, get old after a okay, while, by that, the way? We've heard this. Yeah, we've heard this. <laughs> so what we do now is we make them so relaxed they don't say those things. Anymore. You have a different kind of an office. I mean, I've just seen yeah. pictures, but uh, a lot of style. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's an atmosphere so that people, people have had such horrible experiences in their life with dentistry and with dentists. I kind of don't blame them. So get it done right the first time. Yeah, is, is our whole cool. philosophy is this, Randy, it's this, is let's get it done once, right, that lasts the longest with the best materials, with the best technique, and let's do all that while you're pretty much asleep. 
So you okay. forget the whole experience. So you, you know, don't have to. It's to hear. You, you, you tell me that 90% of your patients, like they get dental implants, are asleep? Yeah, e Is even more. Right? We sedate them. There's two ways to sedate people. We can give them medications so that they're quasi awake. They don't remember the appointment, but they're responsive. And then we have an anesthesiologist that comes in if we really want to sedate somebody down that is extremely scared. Do people request just, that, by the way? Yeah. To be out completely? Out completely. Sometimes. But they usually, wake up, they have great Usually teeth. the sedation just works out perfectly because they're so relaxed, they can go home that night and And not every dentist does uh, sedation, no. by the way? So what, no. special license, special mm -hmm. Special training, training, special licensure. Okay. Um, but it's the type of thing that is so comfortable for people that when I tell them, you're really not going to remember this experience they kind of look at me like yeah you know what I've heard that before <laughs> and uh, okay. but it's really too true the next day they come into the office and I say remember me I said oh, I don't remember much about you from the day before <laughs> really yeah really they don't remember the experience and yet they're awake it's an extremely safe procedure 98 percent of the people that we work on we work on this way people want to get this thing done quickly Okay. They don't want to come in time and time again, have three visits for a root canal and then two more visits for this or that. They just want to get it done. And so I'm different in this way in that I can offer a comprehensive treatment All right. in two or three visits and get everything done. That's what I do. That's, that's okay. kind of my niche. That's kind of what I like to do. So with dental implants, uh, what, yep. what are the different uh, type of patients or categories of patients that you see? Well, there's people that have, um, you know, surprisingly, Randy, people, as they age, they usually have some missing teeth. It's okay. amazing. You get a, a big filling when you're a teenager, and it's a bigger filling when you're in your 20s, then you get a crown, and then you get a root canal, and then the tooth cracks, and it has to come out. Okay. So, you know, what happens is you have people that have one or two missing teeth. And, you know, the mode used to be, uh, well, we'll put bridges in, you know, we'll grind down the teeth around the hole yeah. and put a bridge in and that functions for seven or eight or ten years then you do another one and then you do another one but now with these types of dental implants it's not necessary. So you just give them their teeth back? Is it you, it's like getting your tooth back. Is this true by the way that things have changed so much where you could actually go in in one visit get a dental implant they go home with a tooth yeah, and their you, dental implant in one day is that a bit of an exaggeration you know, for the right me, candidate? Let me tell you for the for the right person in the right situation, you can place an implant in and have a res restoration placed that day. That's the tooth you're talking That's about, the, the restoration. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that hap doesn't happen in every single situation, but the type of implants that we're using today and w in which we're going to talk about okay. have this ability to engage the bone so securely that you can almost have a tooth that same day in almost every circumstance. We temporize and place teeth in with people in an hour. They come okay. in with a missing tooth, they walk like out a with a tooth in an hour, tooth. teeth in an hour, that's real. I mean, yeah, you can it, do that. It's really real. It's really real. There's different techniques we have of temporizing now so that we don't have to have these what they call flippers, these little retainers with a tooth on it yeah. that you can't talk with, that you can't eat with, that you have to take out and so clean the after every meal. So missing one tooth, get a dental implant. Get a I did one yesterday. Okay. Person came in, cracked tooth, we removed the tooth, placed the dental implant, extended the post, made a tooth, it looked like he had nothing done in one day, in and, one and, visit. And, and we've talked and a, a little bit off, you know, off camera quite a bit about this, but you, you, yeah. you think it could prevent future tooth loss yeah, by I know doing it, this? I know it does. Because nobody wants to lose their teeth. Here's what happens when you lose a tooth. The other teeth start to fade into the space. Your teeth are kind of floating in there, actually. All right. All right. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like uh, artists' clay. You place teeth in and they kind of move around. Yeah. Well, if you're missing a tooth, the space fills in, the tooth above comes down into all right. the space. So it's like all a snowball sudden, effect. Yeah, all way. of a sudden you're missing one tooth. Now you've got a bite problem. Now you're starting to miss in, missing two teeth. Now you've got gum problems. Now you're on the way to lo losing even more teeth. And so it goes from one tooth to two to three teeth. Unless you place something in the bone that keeps the bone intact, that bone just melts away. Ask people that wear dentures years okay. and years and years. What happens is those dentures get loose. And it happens interesting, with, interesting. Teeth, with teeth that are missing. It's like having your arm in a sling. If you break your arm, that muscle and that bone will just start to deteriorate as you wear that splint. 
It's the same Atrophy. thing in, in uh, the bone. It just okay. it melts away. So the one line. tooth. Okay. So the other categories are what of dental implant well, patients you, you see. It, Here's what happens. One of the most traumatic experiences for me personally has been in my professional life when I've had to sit down with a patient who has some teeth left. They're missing some teeth, but they can't save their teeth. And I have to tell them that. 